familiarity. I can't even say it. You know, honestly, it's just great to be able to be around, be around people I know and um, to, you know, see guys that kind of have the same vision that I might have and, you know, just be able to be a part and try to build with them. DJ Reader and Ali McNeil, um, you know, two really good guys. And so, how excited are you to join forces with with a line that's really starting to look like it, it's young and talented? Um, you know, it's it's a great opportunity. You know, especially watching them. You know, there's a lot of ballers. You know, just to get them all under one roof, you know, I think we're all gonna have a great opportunity to eat. And so, shoot, I'm super excited. After. After you know a signing, we're all getting familiar with you. I think we lose touch with guys sometimes after the the draft, and you know reading after that 2022 season, just the uh, the crazy amount of procedures you had done. Can you can you just explain? It sounds like you were basically rebuilt in the off season. Um, rebuilt. Uh, I I like that term better. You know, I had to go through some things and. Uh, What's most important was, you know, I was able to keep on playing, and you know, now I get to build myself with a, another off season without surgery. So, you know, I, I, I like this better. I imagine you were you were probably pretty excited to get back on the field last year and, and kind of show uh, or reestablish what what you're all about, and to you know, maybe have that opportunity taken away earlier than you expected. I guess how hungry are you to to get back to proving, you know, you are the guy, you are the player that you showed in, in 2021 when you had the nine sacks? Mm, I like that. I like that. Um, you know, that's that's cool and all, but uh, I even think back to the next year, you know, and what happened that year. Yeah, I was telling Dan that, you know, that, that year I felt like my process was right. I didn't get the right results, but – I really feel like I learned, and 2022 I needed, 2023 I needed. You know, I, I didn't get to play as much as I wanted. I wasn't there to be able to help my team and help the guys that I grown close to. You know, I, it's a step, and you know, those are steps I had to take. And so, you know, just with that behind me, you know, I I'm trying to use that to catapult me into like greatness. You know, it's the year of the dragon. You know, I don't know if y'all know. 2024 is Year of a Dragon, so you know, blessings and prosperity. You said you needed that. What did you learn? What did you learn in the next two years? Like, how did they help you? Um, it learned, well, I learned, you know, um, Brad, Brad said, you know, we don't always get what we want in the way that we want it. And um, in those years, I, I didn't get exactly what I wanted. But I did, I was able to have great connections. My daughter was born. I got married. Like, you know, I've been able to live life. And, uh, you know, I only think it's made me better. So. What was your relationship with Aaron Glenn? You know, I know he was coaching DBs from New Orleans. Do you, like, know what you're getting into with him here? Or, like, what's your memories of him? Um, my memories. That's a hard one. I would only say that I know he's someone that doesn't play around. He's serious about winning. You know, and I like the intensity he's always brought. He's kept it real, and uh, I don't think he's changed. And so, you know, I, I like to come in, you know, help. You know, him and Dan, like, two people that I've watched, and I'm like, you know, I want to play for. You know, I, I don't think there's many coaches in the league that people actually want to play for. And, you know, it's good to be able to, be able to have at least two. What is it about Dan specifically that, that makes you want to play for him? Ha, man. Uh, Coach Payton, I'm going to tell you a little story. Coach Payton got COVID and was out. And so Dan was interim head coach. And he gave a speech. And I remember it was the first time in a long time that somebody gave a speech. And my heart was like, yeah, like, like let's go do it. But um, I just remember his energy. And, you know, there's, I don't want to say not many people have the same kind of passion. But, you know, it, it takes someone that was there to actually understand, you know, me. And so being able to see him in this position, you know, I'd like to be able to help with that. It wasn't like biting kneecaps, but, you know, <laughs> it was something along the lines of, you know, we got grit. And uh, shoot, sadly, that's that's the message I took away. Like, grit, like, he's a, he was being serious. You got me hyped. 
he's still playing that record? Ha, no. Um, how would you describe your, your pass rushing style? Ooh. Uh, violence, physical, but that's even something I want to change. Yeah, I want to adapt. I want to learn, you know. I, I was told by somebody recently that, you know, we got a lot of young guys that, you know, could learn from me. And I, my first thought was, like, shoot, we got a lot of guys I can learn from. And so, you know, it's from my pass rushing, pass rushing style, you know, I think it's just time to adapt, you know, get better. When you say that, you change. I mean, violence always has a place in the NFL. It always could be, you know, successful violent pass rushers. Are you seeking to add more finesse or technique? Like, what, what kind of adaptation are you trying to incorporate in this offseason? I'm trying to win. Yeah, uh, if the violence ain't working, I'm trying to win. If the finesse ain't working, I'm trying to win. You know, uh, I know before at times I've gotten caught up on, you know, I'm trying to beat the man, but there's way more important things than just beating an offensive tackle or whoever is in front of me. You know, there's affecting the game. There's strip sacks. There's disruptions. There's, you know, I just think it's about time to evolve. What did you know about Brad Holmes? Uh, before this process, and what did you take out of any conversations that you had with him? I took, yeah, I, I knew about him before. You know, of course, you got to do your due diligence. But um, what I took was someone that he he told me something nice, and, you know, made me smile. He said, you know, I watched your games, and uh, we we can tell that you know you're one of those guys that really appreciates the game. And you try to put it out there. You know, you're a physical player. And um, he even said in the limited games that you play, played, and you know, after hearing that, and it just it it helped me. What's the word? Solidify? I don't know. It helped me feel like I made part of the right decision. You know, like it's always nice to have you know some belief. You know, especially you know when I haven't been able to prove everybody right, but. What they have. That's a tough one. I don't know. I can't give an answer to that one. Okay. One more guy. You do have a former teammate in Alex Anzalone. He's really grown into his own, into a leader here. What was his presence like in the New Orleans locker room? What kind of relationship did you have with Alex? Hey, somebody said that earlier. They're like, yeah, you know, he's the alpha now. And I'm like, man, like, you know, he's always been a good dude. I, I didn't expect nothing less. You know, I'm just happy to see him running around making them plays, like getting excited. You know, it's great to see someone who I don't want to say I, he might not have been as featured as much, but, you know, he was a baller in his own right, and he's only came here and stepped up his game. So, you know, just seeing that, you know, gives me hope. I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, I'm going to try to do everything in my power to be, you know, ready for whatever they need of me. So, yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you.